good morning. This is Victoria Rutherford from Adelaide Capital. And this morning I am joined by Cesar Gonzalez and Mark Andre Peltier, um, CEO and Chairman of Bonterra Resources. So definitely some exciting news um, out of Osisco and Goldfields last week that's going to bring a substantial amount of investment and infrastructure to the Urban Berry Camp. Um, as you guys know, the Bonterra property sits only about 15 kilometers away from this um, development. And so I'd like to pass it over to Mark andre um, Pelletier, who's going to run us through a brief presentation, um, just talking about the impacts that Bonterra is likely going to see. And then we're going to open it up pretty quickly for Q&A afterwards. So with that, I will pass it over to Mark andre Thank you, Victoria. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. There was a big announcement last week, which will have a significant impact on Bonterra. A Cisco mining partners with a world-class gold producer named Goldfield to develop the windfall project located only 15 kilometers away from our properties. The partnership between Cisco and Goldfields is a 50-50 joint venture to build a new mine, but also a 50-50% interest in the highly prospective urban berry and Kivion exploration camps. You can see the details of the transaction on the slide. There's some cash, significant cash up front. Uh, the transaction is there's more money coming once all the permit will be acquired. We're very excited to see a major gold producer recognize the potential of the urban berry camp by investing $1.2 billion Canadian. And I think that John Venture is a game changer for Pantera and its assets. Goldfield brings an extensive experience in exploring, developing, and mining similar complex or body like Windfall. Not only the Windfall project will be developed toward production, but there are going to be infrastructures that could benefit Berry and Gladiator deposits. Looking at this map, you, you can see in black contour the Bonterra land packages. And all the blue is, is part of the new GV between gold fields and uh, Cisco mining. And, and you can see uh, the location of the windfall deposit up north in the middle of this bit of the map. And just south of it, again, about 15 kilometers south. You can see on the right, the gladiator deposit, and on the left, the berry deposit. We've done quite a bit of work uh, on, on berry last year with the PEA, uh, the, all the drilling we've done on the property. And, and we believe that the project uh, will benefit of all the infrastructure that be put in place uh, by the new joint venture. Goldfield wants to accelerate the next phase of discovering uh, new deposits by investing $75 million Canadian in exploration. Again, Bonterra could benefit from these investments, particularly in the Duke, Duke GV, where Bontera and Cisco form a joint venture with the 70, 30% working interest, respectively. We just completed a short drill program at Duke, 3,300 meters was drilled in March and April this year in collaboration with Cisco. And we're waiting for the results of that campaign. You can see on the map all the regional faults uh, that 
uh, are in in uh, in the urban berry camp. Those faults cross Bonteras and Gold and uh, and the GV uh, properties. For example, the windfall fault and the Mazer fault, where the berry and the windfall deposits are located. On the right, the Lackberry fault is where the gladiator deposit. And those faults don't stop at the end of a claim. They keep going. You can see also on that map uh, all the little stars, which are, are all the gold showings interpreted, intercepted along those faults uh, through exploration. So there's quite a bit of stars along those faults. And, and typically when you understand where the, the faults are, you can target a gold intercepts. I've been uh, with Pantera for more than a year and I've been marketing uh, since then the top three things of Bonterra's assets. We're in the tier one mining jurisdiction, Quebec. We're in the right rock, the ABCB Greenstone Belt, hosted high-grade gold deposit. And I've been talking about the potential of the land package in the urban ferry camp, the exploration potential to find more deposits. It's very interesting to see that gold fields recognize the strengths of actually our, our, our assets. So uh, to conclude uh, before uh, we go to m and I, I think it's a really good opportunity for investors uh, to become shareholders of Bantero. Our market cap does not reflect what is currently happening in the urban berry camp. The arrival of gold fields will enhance our properties and our infrastructures and therefore our companies. Thanks, Marc-Andre, for that presentation. Um, so with that, we are going to open it up to Q&A. Um, so if anyone has a question, um, you can type it in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. So I guess I'm just going to kick off with a few that I have. Um, you know, can you talk about when this investment coming from the joint venture is actually going to translate to work being done on the ground and when we should start, you know, seeing progress? I believe it's it's already happening, Victoria, as 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 mentioned in the press release by Osisco and Goldfield, they already agreed to uh, Goldfield already agreed to pay back uh, two payments of 17 million of expenses that have been already engaged. Uh, the $75 million of exploration, uh, um, I, I believe that will take place, uh, that would might take a bit of time as Goldfield will have to assess the, uh, the ground. It takes a bit of time to put, put up a drill program, but that 75 million will be spent over the next seven years. So I'm, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some money invested this year in, in the camp in exploration. Yeah, in Victoria, of, Victoria, they're they're running six rigs at the moment. You know, that was mentioned in a press release by a Cisco, and that number is only going to go up. So a Cisco never really stopped exploring, and with this deal is actually going to ramp up. Mm -hmm. And then what is the prospects of having a mill? on that property only, you know, 15 kilometers away from your property, you know, do for Bonterra. And I mean, if they have underground mines, obviously they take a little bit more time to ramp up. Is there like a tolling kind of agreement that you think you could see with them for bringing some of your near to surface ore to, or how are you guys thinking about that? It's, it's early days, but, but it, it is something that we have looked at when we, uh, when we look at the berry deposit uh, to bring berry into production, uh, we see synergies uh, with the hydroelectricity power. It will help to reduce our cost to, to operate a mine. 
And the fact that we mm -hmm. could pull meeting or, or pos and process the, or the windfall mail will reduce the haulage distance. Because mm -hmm. as you know, our mail is 110 kilometers away. And the windfall mail would be much closer, which would use the haulage cost. So we capture a, a 25% cost saving opportunity. And, and it, it makes the project uh, in terms of feasibility uh, much more economical because you can reduce uh, the OPEX by 25%. So, so there's, there's a lot, we see a lot of upsides uh, either, uh, you know, or, with the poll meeting or another another type of agreement, but we see definitely synergies that would benefit the project. So just to clarify that 25% saving in OPEX, that's taking into account the reduced hauling um, as well as a benefit from being able to tap into the power lines that they bring to the camp. Yes, and we have captured some potential other savings like those kind of fixed costs, you know, GNAs or uh, camp costs, those, those, those kind of costs as well. Could you maybe just describe your relationship with OSISCO since obviously you're going to have to be able to negotiate some of these agreements with them. You guys have a JV together on Duke already, um, just so everyone knows. <laughs> uh, no, uh, you, you'd be surprised of the, because our camps are so close, we actually share some of the costs, for example, for road maintenance. This is very okay. difficult. Uh, summer, winter cost. Uh, we have a, a big tower uh, where, uh, which provide our internet connections and it's actually shared infrastructure with, with us Cisco. So we, uh, the, the contractor who's building the power line at the moment is actually staying at the bachelor camp. Okay. Uh, yeah, so so there, there are ongoing synergies at the moment. Mm -hmm. Most recently was the Duke GV program that we worked together with a Cisco, the 70, 30% uh, GV. We worked with a Cisco to put a project together. They agreed to participate and, and we executed the program. We just finished in, in April. So, so it's gonna be some uh, more discussion, more on the technical side following the, the completion of the report about Duke, but definitively uh, some ongoing synergies already with, with uh, our neighbor. Um, what do you guys anticipate seeing just in terms of the availability of equipment and labor in the area? So what's it like now and what's going to happen as they obviously ramp up this big operation over the next few years? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's going to be a challenge, no doubt. It, it is a challenge at the moment. Uh, however, uh, I mean, if, if I can speak for, for the windfall project, uh, the fact, and, and, and our project as well, the fact that we have a mining camp attracts people from outside of the region, outside of the ABCB region. So it, it's really attractive because you can bring people from, let's say, south of Quebec, and they don't have to look for an apartment. They don't have to look, you know, they have a camp, they, they have food. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a big, big thing to attract people outside of the region. Um, would you be able to compare some of the grade and metallurgy that you guys are seeing between Gladiator and Barry and the Windfall Project? In terms of grade, our highest grade resources are located at the Gladiator uh, deposit, which is about eight grams per ton. Uh, windfall is uh, eight to 10 grams per ton. So it's uh, a bit higher grade than Gladiator, but in the same range. Barry uh, is uh, the, a bit different there. Uh, the grade is actually between five to six grams per ton. So it's lower grade. However, uh, the ore is not uh, deep. So it's very shallow deposit, close to surface and and it makes those those kind of grade, you know, the five grammars uh, attractive because of the location of the deposit near surface. Yeah. Also, Marc-Andre, you may want to talk about the um, 
the properties in terms of um, acid generating. You know, the barrier ore is non-acid generating, which is important for permitting and um, depositing and tailings. So Barry is kind of good, good, good rock. <laughs> I, I know you've mentioned before too um, that Osisco, a lot of the deposit and high grade material that they've seen at Windfall has been, you know, deeper um, and kind of like down more at depth and at Gladiator, because you guys don't have a decline yet, you really haven't been able to get down to the same types of depths. Um, with what you've seen so far at Gladiator, are you guys seeing a cons like, do you guys believe that it'll be consistent and that when you guys get down deeper, you're going to start seeing some higher grades as well, based on just what you've seen so far? Yeah, the, the, the grade, I think the eight grams per ton is, you know, we, we have a very large resources at that 1.4 million ounces at eight grams. So uh, there's a, a story in ABCB as deeper you get, higher grade is. Uh, is we've seen that in many mines in, in, in Val d'Or. Uh, there, there is a potential that the grade gets higher at depth, uh, but you have to drill. You have to drill it. Uh, our resource at Gladiator is at 1,200 meters deep depth. So it's not, not really deep. Uh, Gladi uh, Barry is even shallower at 650 meters depth. So, so you can see, and, and we have 1.2 million ounces at, at Barry. So potential to add more ounces at Barry definitely there. Uh, our all bodies, all, the, all of our all bodies remains open at depth and on the strike land. So, so we haven't seen the end yet at uh, both Barry and Gladiator. Yeah, and I'll add to that. We've we've had conversations with with the uh, team at Cisco, and they they reminded us of their story, which is Windfall. You know that was an acquisition they made in 2015, a company called Eagle Hill. And what Eagle Hill had at the time, fast forward to today, when the when it looks like this is going to be you know the next big gold mine in Canada, those resources are only about 10 percent of the overall resources uh, here. You know, what, what was known at the time and what was in, uh, drilled further to, to expand that known resource. So the, the windfall deposit is a, is a story of discovery. They had mm -hmm. something good to start. It merited uh, spending money to, to, to know what was there, but then to continue to drill deeper and in, in other areas to define other resources completely separate. Uh, related but not you know part of the original discovery uh, Lynx, for example which is their highest grade area was not even known about i mean there was no uh, reason to even think that something like that existed below but they drill tested it and here we are today so it's important to get a start and for us we look at our deposits and that's what we have and that's where we've taken them to and our ability to to drill holes uh, to the depths that we've drilled but you know, a Cisco has a different model and um, if applied to our deposits might have, you know, more positive results, you know, their ability to drill deep. And then I guess with, you know, this new information and synergies that you guys are seeing, would there be a plan down the road, you know, to revisit the pre-feasibility study and, and things that you put out with now, these synergies, as well as we've seen inflation come down as well? and just looking at the new economics for the projects. We've, we've done quite a bit of work in-house, in if I can say, on, uh, on the Barry deposit, particularly at Barry. Uh, it, it is our intention to, you know, we keep monitoring the, the market, see what's, what's going on in the region, on the cost, particularly in the cost. I have discussion with contractors when we dis when we made the decision earlier this year to you know to pause the infill drilling at Barry, it's because the timing was not quite there yet. With, with the announcement of the GV between Gold Fields and Cisco, now we know that windfall is going to be real. It's going to happen, and 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 that will change. Uh, you know, the economic on the Barry deposit. So as the part of, 
part of the project progresses, I think we're going to have to look at Barry again and, and, and put those synergies, put, put more time uh, and, and, you, you know, really figure out the, the potential of the Barry deposit. But definitively, I uh, worked to, to look at Barry deposit again, no doubt. And does it change any of your near-term capital plans in terms of, you know, what you guys are drilling or what you guys are looking at? For now, we just complete the Duke GV, as I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, last month, we have two drill rigs. Uh, it, it is program that we, uh, we, we had planned for, for a long time on the Barry Northeast and on the Panache South. Barry Northeast is a, a greenfield exploration program to drilling uh, nothing has been drilled before. So it could be quite, quite exciting there. Our team is quite excited, drilling virgin ground. And on uh, the Panache South is more follow-up from last year, a uh, drill program where we had some good intersection. So that's, that's kind of what we plan for now. We have about five, 6,000 meters to drill in the next uh, few months. Uh, again, with, with, with what's happening in the camp, I think, I think we have to reevaluate what, what we're gonna do in the second half of the year uh, at, in our projects. And then I have two audience questions and I guess they can kind of go together in a way, like on one side, you know, they're going to be doing all of this regional exploration and obviously your property is sitting kind of, you know, smack in the middle and right adjacent to where, you know, they're going to be drilling. Um, so is there potential for them to look at JVs, you know, with you guys, um, further JVs? Um, but then on the other side, you look at the resource they currently have and their mine life. Um, and is there any incentive to do so given, you know, they do have a long mine life in front of them and just how are you guys thinking about that? Mm -hmm. I think it's early days uh, in terms of GV or because the transaction just happened last week. But I think uh, I think for Bonterra, I think we will be considering, uh, I think everything is on the table at this stage uh, to, to better advance our project and to provide a better return to our shareholders. Yeah, and to answer the question about a mine with a long mine life, that is a good thing. It's also a bad thing. For example, um, if you could recover all that gold in two years versus 20 years, you would do it in two because the payback would be very, very uh, dramatic and better. So every mining company is always looking for a way to advance ounces because it's better to have money now than later. Um, and because of that, you get on a treadmill and the speed goes up every year and companies are valued on uh, their profitability, but also how they grow. So my guess is that, and, and, and you can just read what Goldfields put out in their press release. They had quotes saying, we think this is going to be a district that has many mines. They want more gold. I, I don't, I, I've never met a person who invests in gold who wants less gold. So yes, you have a nice start with windfall. It's a world-class deposit, but they want more. And then could you just provide an update on how the permitting process at your mill is going? Uh, the permitting? Uh, so we, we just heard back from the, the COMEX, which is the entity that regulates uh, the permits and the north of Quebec. And they came back from, uh, with uh, more questions, which is good uh, because uh, you know, as you're going, going through the process, the questions getting more detailed and more, a bit more picky. And we are at the, the point now that we have to take an engagement. So basically, we have to commit on what we said we're going to do, you know, once uh, the mail is going to be upgraded, when the tailings management is going to be expanded, we, we make commitment and, and we have to take engagement. So we are at the, that process now. It, it will take uh, three, I think, three months, another three, six months to answer those questions, those detailed questions, make, provide the engagement that as an operator, we will you know, uh, follow certain rules and, and we we'll hope, hope to hear back from the COMEX in the second half of the, uh, this year. 
And then what catalyst should we be watching for? Um, just specifically kind of, well, I guess in two buckets, one out of you guys, and then two just out of the camp in general um, over the remainder of the year. Uh, in, in short term, it's, it's, it's our exploration program ongoing, the Greenfield Exploration Program. Uh, I kept saying there's definitive more gold in the European Barry camp. We're one, one hole away from that. So, so our team is quite excited with the ongoing exploration program we have. So stay tuned for some results. And, and I think I think everybody, everybody's eyes would be looking at the urban Barry camp now, see the progress uh, with the GV, with the Francisco and Goldfields, see what they're gonna do. Uh, so I think I think for the next three, two, three months, it's gonna be a very exciting time for Bantera. Uh, uh, please uh, stay tuned. Uh, again, really good time to invest, I think, uh, in our company as the camp is being developed, the camp is becoming a reality. So. Yeah, I think that's an important point, Mark Andre, is that, you know, when we were working on our standalone plans, which we still are, a Cisco working on their standalone plans, you know, we were both saying the same thing. We have deposits that are in a tier one jurisdiction, a prolific belt, the Abitibi Greenstone belt. And um, there was some past production on our side of the, of the table with Barry and with Bachelor further north, but it, it wasn't really uh, a, a well-known district. And now with Goldfields coming in, that's going to change. You know, people will see a lot of progress. Uh, Goldfields is one of the top gold mining companies in the world, over a $10 billion market cap they had have tried to get into Canada and now they are there through this JV and they didn't do this as a one-off investment. This is going to be their Canadian operations where they put a, uh, you know, um, leave their, their mark and where they build a business. So I think everything has changed. There's Bonterra before this announcement and there's Bonterra after this announcement. Um, one last quick question um, from the audience that came in, and you guys may not be able to comment on this, but we'll ask it anyway. Um, has Ignico, one of your major shareholders, had anything to say about, you know, Goldfields now coming into the region? Not that I'm aware. I cannot really comment on that. I know. I figured you wouldn't, but I just thought I'd put it out there. I haven't, <laughs> Sorry, seen, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen anything public. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> um, and, and with that, that's the end of my questions. And it looks to be the end of the audience questions. So are there any just last words that you'd like to leave leave guys, leave everyone with? Yeah. Well, uh, again, th thank you for your interest. Uh, thanks to be here today. I hope, I hope you, after this webinar, you're going to be excited as we are at the moment. Uh, it's a game changer for Bantera. Uh, we are very excited about what's going on. I think it really adds value to our company. And, and, and I think our stock will benefit of that. So again, uh, if, if you're not a shareholder of Bantera, it, it, or if, if you want to get more stock, and I think it's the right time. I think all the, the planets are aligned now uh, for Bonterra to be to become a successful company. And you guys are gonna be on the road too. You guys have great schedules, you know, coming up at 121 New York and you guys have a conference coming up um, in Quebec. So you guys are gonna be out there obviously talking about this and meeting with new and existing shareholders. So there's definitely gonna be a lot going on to watch for. Um, thank you both for joining me today. We really appreciate it. Um, and thank you, everyone who logged on to listen to the Bonterra story. Thank, thank you, Victoria.